it's time for another 10 out of 10 re-zero review analysis. Amelia's last trial. Last trial? It's the present trial we cleared. And then the future stuff? I bet it's gonna get off screen to prevent the audience from knowing stuff. Happy ReZero Day, everyone. This episode was not what I expected it to be. But in a moment of post-nut clarity, I realized it was really the best episode of the second core. The fight- Is this the best episode? Uh, let me think. Maybe it is? I don't know, is, is, is Echidna just memeing? Because every episode is like a new best episode for him. There's a lot of good episodes. Is it the best? I really enjoyed the, the Amelia scene though. I, I, don't, I don't know for a lot of other people, but like... Yeah, the Pandora shit was fucking crazy. I, I think that Trial 1 flashback with Regulus and Pandora, that, that shit went fucking crazy. But the Amelia scene with the non-believers turning into devoted members of the Amelia camp, that, that shit went hard for me though. Fight scene was like less than a minute long, but the animation was so good I didn't even notice. I found it funny how Frederica dropped Otto almost as fast as I dropped the Promised mm -hmm. Neverland season two. And for some reason, Amelia Man, Promised Neverland just really got shit on, huh? Sounded way cuter this episode than ever before. Yeah, this Amelia sounded more like Kid Amelia we had in Trial 1. But not quite like present Amelia, so obviously this is still in the past when it's like they're still in Elior Forest and they've grown up just a bit, but not completely grown up yet. Before I talk about the new episode, this video is sponsored by TacFam. Really? really? A god tier game. Like, Buy it today and- Like, really? The TacFam? <laughs> what kind of ad is this? A kid nut? Re Does he have a link to it? What? Use the fucking promo code NUT for No, no, he's memeing! This is not a real fucking ad! You can't just say that during an ad segment! Use the fucking promo code <laughs> NUT for 97 extra months. 97 extra month, guys! Totally free. Oh I'm my god! Joking, guys, TacFam doesn't exist, and let's be honest, nobody would actually sponsor me at this point. I think reviewing hentai might have permanently demonetized my entire existence, but- You'd be surprised. There is actually um, so many, um, like, uh, obviously there's like a thing called brand risk where the more you're not like friendly to advertisers because you swear a lot or the nature of your content's too edgy, right? It, sometimes you're, you're, you're filtered out from those kind of sponsors. But I've gotten so many emails, right? You, I think that I'm definitely a brand risk from the shit that I say, but I've gotten so many emails of motherfuckers where they have websites that's like, please, um, we'll send you a free body pillow. Please review it. I'm like... <laughs> You serious? I clunk on the website. It's just a bunch of fucking degen anime shit. So like, there's a lot of sponsors in the degenerate side too. You'd be surprised. But whatever, this episode was a 10 out of 10 and that's all that matters. Classic. To be honest though, at first, I was a bit conflicted about this episode because I thought it was a brilliant adaptation of the source material, but I could also understand the criticism. There's a lot of action happening in ReZero right now. But it gets fucking cut out immediately. Now, in this episode didn't really have much progression outside of Amelia's trial. But I think the main issue is that people don't want to wait another week to find out what happened. Maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like a lot of the criticism would disappear if we could just binge the rest of the season instead of watching it weekly. Personally, I would have allocated a bit- The criticisms would disappear if we binged it rather than uh, waiting it weekly. Is that a valid defense? Should an anime be judged while it's airing on a weekly basis, or should it be judged after a season's finished? I feel like there's definitely different ways to consume it, and definitely if there's different excuses you can make, but let's say shows like Isekai Oji-san, or Mr. Demon King Academy, or even Near Automata Season 1, right? The scheduling just fucks everything up, and a lot of people immediately drop it, and due to that structure, it's a failed project. But if you watched it, if, if you gave Isekai Oji-san or those shows, like, it's like, all right, the season's over. Just binge 12 episodes. I bet they would have a lot of fun. It's, but obviously, like, I think the people are going to be more judgmental during the weekly seasonal releases, right? Because it's airing. It's a trendy topic where people are going to talk about it. Bit more time to Garfield and Elsa, especially after last week's cliffhanger hyped up their fight. The short bit of action we did get was excellent, but there wasn't any actual progress in terms of the fight. True. And the scene ended with literally the same cliffhanger as last week. Don't get me wrong though, it was really good animation, and that was a really lucky wall. But Yeah. <laughs> it was a lucky wall, but yeah, it just felt like the fight really didn't go anywhere, right? And everything was cut off 
early in order to squeeze in more of the plot, which I do appreciate, right? We, we, what do you want? ReZero to fucking... You know what? Yes, I do want that. Sure, fuck it. They're gonna... They make in every episode like 29 minutes and 40 seconds. Just make it 40 minutes. Fuck it. Yep. Every epi every standard episode to ReZero should be 40 minutes long. So that you can include all the plot and the fight scenes too. That was a really lucky wall. But there were a few details cut from the novel that could have made it significantly better. For example, when Garfield had the knife in his mouth, instead of it just randomly disappearing like Echidna's eyes, he was supposed to bite down Chomp and it. shatter it with his teeth. It would have been such an iconic visual, plus it would have reminded us how strong he is. Fun fact, as a kid, Garfield copied the combat style of Reinhardt's ancestor. He learned- What? We copied? Learned about it in a book he read, and then spent the rest of his childhood in a training arc, which helped him become the badass he is- What? As a kid, Garfield copied the combat style of Reinhardt's ancestor. He- this guy looks sick. He has an eye patch. Learned about it in a book he read and then spent the rest of his child. He just read a book and he taught himself how to fight like the fucking sword saint. Hood in a training arc, which helped him become the badass he is. <laughs> oh, shit. And, okay. <laughs> this is more things I can just use to fuel my propaganda of my bullshit power scaling. Where Garfield, if he does kill Elsa, then like Garfield better than Reinhardt confirmed, bro. Is today. So for Elsa to hold her ground was very impressive, and the longer the fight went on, the more Garfield began to respect her. Elsa has some pretty crazy health regen, but let's not forget that Garfield has a trump card too. If he transforms, Transform. he might be able to win the fight. Every second of their battle was so crucial that even blinking would have been fatal for either party. Although, maybe not Elsa, because what Garfield does to her is definitely my definition of fatal. A normal human's face would have been literally yeah, a normal human face, but she's not. I we, we only see her with the little scratches on her face, some dust marks, because I think the entire time her flesh was getting ripped to shreds, but also healing at the same time. ...deleted, but I guess Elsa's beauty was just too powerful. Instead of being horribly disfigured... Yeah, look, just little scratch marks. I, I think she healed this shit up. Elsa's face completely healed until there wasn't even a scratch on it. But this isn't Redo of Healer. In ReZero, it could take hours to heal that kind of injury, and Not Garfield Elsa. understood that. As we saw in Season 2, Episode 11, he's able to use healing magic himself, so he can easily tell that Elsa's not a human. The speed of which... Somewhat human. Well, I don't know any other species, right? I don't know. I know elves. <laughs> Do dwarves exist here? Maybe. There's like spirits. There's like spirit people. There's like beastmen. I don't think Elsa's is like beast though. What else could she be? Her dark theme and her pale skin. And while she doesn't have a lust for blood, she does you know, lust for the guts. And with the whole melee biting into Elsa's nape thing. Vampire? Why not vampire? Don't vampires have like healing? Right? I could believe that. If vampires ex I don't think we've seen her teeth, but like maybe she's like half vampire. Who knows? I'm trying to think of like reasons as to why the fuck can she just do this, right? And a kid that's make it saying, you know, she's just somewhat human, so Judging by her themes and what I've known and just like media like this, I could believe vampire. Elsa's not a human. The speed of which her body regenerates appears to defy the laws of magic. I mean, even Felix wouldn't be able to heal someone that quickly. Felix is a fraud. And it's crazy, the anime's portrayal of this character. Apparently, Felix is like, lore-wise, Felix is supposed to be so like, respected in Lugunica, bro. Like, the greatest water magic user. The greatest healer ever. Apprenticed by like, like, like for these like water magic, like healing shit. Apparently, there's like these like super important teachers and mentors that are trying to like specifically train up like OP healers. And Felix is like basically the new generation of that. But in the anime, they make Felix out to be a little bit of a dum dum. I remember the subjugation arc. Remember in season one where Felix really did do shit until we told Felix to do something. Felix highlights probably comes from Felix like biting super fan service moments. Saving us from the cart, right? Against that suicide bomber guy. I don't know. I feel like Felix should be like more glazed. But the anime doesn't really glaze Felix beyond just fan service. Unless he's healing away their erectile dysfunction. But there was some cut dialogue from... Could Felix heal Rudius's erectile dysfunction? Maybe. In the web novel that I would have liked to see. For example, Garfield even goes as far as calling Elsa a witch and a... You're one of... 
You're no different than one of the old witches, but I'm gonna think that the old witch does not refer to the witches of old, like melancholy and uh, vanity. A vampire. Whoa! You're a damn vampire! R Wait, my guess back to your. Wait, really? Vampire? And I couldn't tell if he was insulting her again or theory crafting, but she didn't really deny either claim. She might be a vampire, man. She. I haven't seen her like just bite in and drink blood, but thematically pale skin, all this dark edgy look, the regeneration, and Melee like biting into Elsa's nape in that one break time, it just feels like it's hinting that it could be vampire. Personally, I haven't seen any convincing arguments detailing how Elsa could possibly be a witch because there aren't any sins left. We already unlocked all nine witches including Hector, almost yeah. all of whom died 400 years ago, and we didn't get any new witches after that. All their successors were called Archbishops. But a lot of you in the last video's comment section theorized that Elsa is you- What did she say? But a lot of witches after that, all their successors were called- Successors are called Archbishops? Called Archbishops. Whoa, 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 Successors. I didn't know archbishops are successors to witches. I thought archbishops are sim just simply people that took on a witch factor. But uh, I feel like this is an unintended leak. So, like, like, I know that, the you know, basically, if you want to be an archbishop, you need to have, like, a gospel, and you need to have a witch factor representing a sin and be recognized by the church. But I didn't know that the intention is for them to be actual successors of the witches. But a lot of you in the last video's comment section theorized that Elsa is using an authority. A... Elsa has an authority, huh? Authority of vanity? I think we're reaching. I'm an enemy only because Elsa has some kind of authority. It's an interesting thought. Maybe she does. Who knows? I first thought when Elsa resurrected survived Beak, Beach was attacked because does this bitch have Pandora's authority or something? Well, it doesn't have to be an authority. It could be a divine protection. Elsa has no divine protection. How could you just confirm that? How, how, how is this guy just, just saying Elsa has no divine protection? Like, unless you've read ahead, you're just fucking spoiling. I don't think there are many spells to make people immortal, so maybe she got an authority. Like, like I hate it when people say shit like this, because it's like, okay, you can't just fucking confirm that, because if you're an enemy only, it's a devil's proof. Nothing has been shown for or against her, you know, not or having this shit. So what do you fucking mean? You, you can't just fucking do that. I'm pretty sure she has a divine protection, man. Using an authority. Does not have a divine protection? Are you sure? No, it was a mention of Felt's blessing of the wind. And how Elsa made one single comment saying, Oh, wow, you're loved by the world. And then I envy you, right? And based off that one single line, we're supposed to assume Elsa has no divine protection or blessing. But again, these are all just fucking assumptions. So at the end of the day, there's no conclusive evidence until it's literally confirmed. It's impossible. And that's the thing that I fucking hate and love about ReZero. That this show is just riddled with so many fucking implications and assumptions. And then it's also riddled with retards with zero fucking reading comprehension. That also just like understands the wrong shit. Or just jumps to conclusions and acts as if their headcanon is an actual fucking... Fact that's been stated by the author, and then the worst part is motherfuckers gaslighting the author, saying the author also lies in the Q and A. That's some that the, the, that thing is one of the things I fucking like despise about this fucking community and fandom. Authority. Assuming you guys are correct, lust would probably make the most sense because Elsa is clearly getting turned on every time she takes damage. Not to mention, lust is also what I feel whenever I look at her. Another option that would Maybe. make sense to me is wrath. We got to see Minerva use her authority of wrath to heal Subaru. So if Elsa is the Archbishop of Wrath, her quick regeneration could be the result of an authority similar to Minerva's. Maybe. The only problem with these theories is the fact that Elsa hasn't shown any signs of being affiliated with the witch cult. So far, every witch and every Archbishop we've met have gone out of their way to announce their titles. Mm -hmm. But when Elsa does it... Bowel Hunter. Elsa Granhild. I think that... I don't think she, okay, maybe uh, let's just get rid of the divine protection or blessing. Let's get rid of the authority. She's just a fucking vampire. Vampires just exist in this show and she's healing off of that. Sure, why not? She's just the bow hunter, nothing more. Even Reinhardt identified her the same way. So if she was an archbishop, he probably would have mentioned it. Maybe. But let me know what you guys think. Is Elsa an archbishop? <laughs> Amazing art.
<laughs> Amazing art of Archbishop Elsa right over there. Or is she a witch? I think she's a vampire. I don't think she's either or. I I I think she's literally a fucking vampire. Vampire species exists in this world. Could she be a vampire? Or maybe yes. she's a werewolf. All right. What? <laughs> Wait, what? A werewolf? Okay, I think now we're cooking. Elsa the werewolf. I like this. All right, it's probably not that last one, but I will become a furry if I have to. Subaru was so confident he'd be able to get Beatrice out of the library, but he ended up failing miserably. Kicked out. He did make a good point, though. What's the worst that could happen if Beatrice breaks her contract? If she's going to die anyway, she might as well try to break it just to see what happens. Mm. But ultimately, Subaru wasn't able to convince her to leave the library, which means the mansion's difficulty has gone up a lot. God fucking damn it, Biku. You gotta be like this right now. But if we were just to go with it, I, I think they're really setting up something huge for Biku. Obviously, you know, the first round failed, but it sets up the stage and maybe there's going to be a very huge climax and a very heartfelt moment where Biko let go to the hidden library and the book she holds so dear to her heart and she makes a contract with Subaru and it's going to be an amazing moment. Especially after the debut of Rock Piggy, a giant hippo with human teeth and human vocal cords. <laughs> Did anyone else find these little rat bats kind of- I felt so bad. I didn't know the guilty little literally just like- Feasts on these little bats, bro. Adorable. I oh, on the other video, I thought that this was a guilty low plushie, but maybe it is just like the little bat witch fiend plushie. Yeah, I think it closer to look at it. Yeah, I think so. Adorable. I think Subaru should really take one back with him as a pet. I should clarify that the guilty low is supposed to be a boss level assassin type mob beast that hunts with stealth. And one of the things that makes it unique from other mob beast is how it's intelligent enough not to make loud noises for no reason. <laughs> Butchered. <laughs> well, you wanna like the anime direction wise. You want to like make it hype, so your big monster appears, you start screaming, you, you, you feel the fear from the monster, but lore-wise, it's supposed to be like a quiet assassin. Ah, it's a bit lost in translation. So I don't really know why it roared at the top of its lungs, but at least it- Because it already found its targets, and there's no need to be quiet anymore, I don't know. It sounded better than the hippo. <laughs> Amelia's trial was literally the happiest thing we've seen all season, yet... Alright, yeah, I cried, okay? It reminded me a lot of Subaru's first trial, which also made me cry. Fuck. It's kind of embarrassing how often- Man. I guess I'm just a maniac, huh? Like, the only scenes that made me cry in ReZero is episode 7 and episode, like, 23. The, the heroic death. Shit like this, just... I don't know. This is built fucking different, baby. Often the show makes me cry. Emilia enjoyed her peaceful day with Juice and Fortuna, but deep down, she knew that none of it was canon. This trial was very uneventful compared to the rest of the episode, but it was the highlight by far. Every single shot was so beautiful, for a second I thought it was season one. We also achieved- Ooh. Is season two that bad? <sighs> I mean, I've literally watched Every, an episode of ReZero every day for about two months now. From season one to season two. I think season one definitely has a higher polish. And there, it's definitely better, but like not so significant that like I'm thrown off by the direction of the animation. It, it honestly just never really bothered me, but maybe I don't have that high standard of like animation. Achieved the pinnacle of cuteness thanks to Amelia's voice actor. Even if it's only for this one episode, I'm sorry, Echidna, but Amelia was best girl. Speaking. Why is she crying? Echidna! Tell me! Why? Speaking of rare occurrences, I also thought this part was better than the source material. I would have at the end, but as a whole, this trial far exceeded everything I hoped it would be. And in case you're wondering why Echidna was crying, why? don't worry, I am too. If I had to guess- Shut the- What, 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 why? What, 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 what is this pained expression? It's not the face of a hater. Why is she crying? I am too. If I had to guess, it's partially because Amelia wasn't supposed to pass the trials according to the Book of Wisdom. Remember that Roswell's- That's it? That's it? It's, it's really that simple? That something happened against Echidna's plans and she's upset by it? 
Really? It's that simple? Gospel tells Echidna's prediction for the future, so it's only natural for her to grow irritated upon realizing the timeline has diverged from her prophecy. But that's just icing on the cake, because this episode also revealed the extent to which Echidna absolutely despises Amelia. I find this dynamic- So it really is that simple. That face was a pained expression because she realizes that Amelia's doing too well, and now her own book is going against the script. That does make sense. It, it explains like her face, like, like the logic of, ah shit, she's doing well, she's moving forward, but on top of that, my own book that's told me the perfect future is now crumbling before me. I have a pained look in my face. I just hate you so much. That does make sense a lot to me, but I don't know. A show like Reese, I thought, I don't know. Maybe I'm overthinking it again. Maybe, maybe it really is just that. I find this dynamic interesting because once again, Echidna is the most intelligent character in ReZero who also has the ability to predict the future. So if she hates someone, there's probably a good reason for it. Because Amelia's... Because what does Echidna want? Contract with Subaru and a completionist route and Amelia prevents that. But beyond that, what else? Amelia's self, like... I don't know, Echidna has her own goals and her own agenda and... It, Emilia's existence is making her own agenda impossible. As we know, a lot of racist people hate Amelia simply because she's a half-elf. But if Echidna was racist, she probably wouldn't have founded the sanctuary. So that leaves- She can't get revived if Subaru wins? Why not? I don't think that Volcanica being defeated and releasing the seal from the sanctuary is dependent on Amelia winning. Or not winning. I think that can happen with or without her with only one reason she could possibly hate Amelia. Echidna thinks Rem is better? Official sources are sim for Amelia. Rem is better? Um... It's unfair? Because in season one, I would agree, but season two, there's just been no Rem because, you know, she got erased. It's, it, it's not even her fault. Rem literally does not exist right now. And Amelia has had like 20 fucking episodes of just development, just being at rock low to like, just, just this new Amelia. So hard for me to agree with this. It's again, it's just unfair because this has been Amelia season and Rem has literally been erased. Rem is better. I never imagined a waifu herself would. Per oh my God. That's a lot. Hold up. <laughs> what is that room, bro? <laughs> God damn. Hey, you know what? I bet, I bet some of you have this room. I bet some of you definitely have this room, man. Participate in waifu wars, but I guess anything's possible in 2021. On a serious note, she did have to watch Amelia. Yes, exactly. Echidna saw this shit, and then before this happened, she saw this motherfucker vandalize her own fucking graveyard, trying to hype up Amelia. Like she saw everything, got her rejected with the contract, right? Of course she'd be pissed off kissing Subaru, so maybe she got jealous? I think it's probably something a lot deeper and more personal that won't be revealed until much later in the story because Echidna doesn't seem fond of Satella either. There we go. That's the true reason, right? That, I, I, again, there's a way deeper reason that I think relates to Satella, Amelia, and whoever Amelia's mom could be, right? She despises them. I think it has to do with some sort of regrets in the past and Amelia's existence. Just, I don't know, it's just like a painful experience. But without those finer details, who really knows? So I'd be willing to bet her hatred for Amelia is closely related to that. There were a few big changes though. In the web novel, Echidna had a lot more dialogue. And she told Amelia there were exactly three people she truly hates in the world. I'm three people. Well, there's Satella, Amelia, and Amelia's mom. I'm assuming Amelia and Satella were two of those. Unless they count as one, I don't know. Shit like this side by side just makes me feel like Satella and Amelia are just twin sisters, man. The resemblance is uncanny, of course, but like... Sato and Amelia being twin sisters is a theory that I could get on board with. No, but I thought the third person was probably the dragon. My only evidence is the fact that Roswall wants to kill the dragon. True, Echidna was sealed by Volcanica, so hating the dragon I think makes sense too. I mean, think about it. Roswall admits that Echidna is the only thing he cares about, so it's unlikely that he wants to kill the dragon for personal gain. He's most likely just following what he read in his gospel. <laughs> the death note. What was the dragon's name again? And Ram. Ram is one way or the other a tool. The answer for the dragon. And if the gospel told him to kill the dragon, that means Echidna told him to kill the dragon. 
I don't know why Echidna wants to kill the dragon, but hope- I thought it's the seal. What do you mean you don't know? Of course you know. What, what do you mean you don't know? Volcanica sealed Echidna into this witch's graveyard, and I thought the whole reason was Roswell simps for her, kill dragon, release seal, get his fucking lover back into the world for Roswell to then get cucked as Echidna would then thirst for Subaru again? I don't know. Hopefully she's got enough resin to claim the rewards. This episode- <laughs> That was a Genshin Impact meme. That's crazy, bro. That, that's the Valen, bro. I don't know any of you that's played Genshin to remember this fight. Enough resin to claim the rewards. This, this shit, this battle, it was a fucking joke of a battle, but the real boss wasn't the Valen, the dragon. The real boss is the camera. The fucking annoying camera work during this fucking 3D like fight. I hated that shit. This episode also highlighted the theme of acceptance. Earlier this arc, Subaru struggled with accepting Emilia for who she is, while Emilia struggled with accepting herself and her past. Garfield had a similar issue, but after he stopped rejecting his past, he was able to move forward. The reason Subaru couldn't pass his second trial was his failure to accept the possibility that the unthinkable present could have existed. And in comparison to what he went through, Emilia's trial felt like it was set to the lowest possible difficulty. But that's because her objective was different. Accepting the impossible happiness she witnessed in the trial would have been easy, but Emilia had to reject it instead, choosing reality over a dream. Let's so go. although acceptance is the main theme of this arc, in some cases, the inverse, rejection, is just as important. Beiko. Beatrice has already accepted herself, and that's exactly what the problem is. And she needs to reject that. Same with Roswell, right? They're both hanging on to this 400 years of investment they've made. Doesn't want it to be mean for nothing. But Subaru's here to just break that shit. Echidna gave Beatrice the sole duty of storing knowledge in a library. Exactly like a book. To Echidna, there was no difference. But as we know, books don't feel emotions and they don't experience loneliness. Yet Beatrice accepted her purpose of being a book. Allowing her life to be just as meaningless and empty as the blank pages in her gospel. That's why Subaru came to convince her to reject what she is and- Man! You know what would be a really cool moment? I don't know, just like... You know how Subaru has already written into his own gospel with his blood? And Byuka right now won't do anything because the book has stopped, you know, updating? Just to fucking make a point, it would be cool if Subaru wrote in the book. It just forced it down on Byuka. It's like, yep, I am that person. No. That person does not exist. Go on with Natsuki, make a contract with Natsuki Super. He just writes that shit instead of Bieko. Like, obviously, we're just fucking trying to make a point, but something like that, just for her to, like, make a move, I think would be cool. And change her life's purpose. Instead of letting her accept the miserable fate chosen for her by Echidna, he wants to let Beatrice decide her destiny on her own. Acceptance isn't always the answer, because sometimes it's better to change into a maid outfit. Woo! What the... <laughs> anyway, damn. I just hope Elsa survives. I don't- I think she might be cooked finally, I don't know, but... Elsa and Mady, I would love them to join our team, man. Can we just take a second to appreciate this? Elsa would probably be the worst maid ever, but it might be worth it to hire her anyway. Let's mm -hmm. all pray for an unthinkable present where ReZero goes anime original and replaces the next three episodes with an Elsa redemption arc. Emilia's final trial. Elsa redemption arc? <laughs> I am so fucking down, man. I just- Look at that! Elsa, Subaru, and Mady. What a happy family! It's a redemption arc. Emilia's final trial is something I'm really looking forward to, especially because I have no idea how they're gonna adapt it. I don't think they're gonna adapt it. I don't know. It just feels like this is a classic example of something being off screen in order to not let the audience know of the actual fucking shit that happens in ReZero because that's just. Yeah, and you just want to keep the audience hooked and uh, confused and talk about the mystery. So will we even see the future? I would love to see the future, but I'm not hoping on it. No idea how they're going to adapt it. I can't wait. These last few episodes are going to be crazy, and I hope you guys are hyped too. Yes, sir. I also hope you enjoyed this video. I did. Please go give Mr. Echidna a like on the video. Here's a link. Check out his channel if you haven't, and I will see you guys in the next one.